World Cup this year again in India. You've played mm. not in India. What do you think are going to be the top four teams? Top four teams, yeah. Well, is that tough? It, is well, that tough? It, it is tough. Yuviki Cricket Diary only on Radio City. Okay. This is Yuvi's Cricket Diary. We are on Radio City ninety one point one. It is such an honor. To have with me the Aussie legend Shane Watson. Shane, thank you so much for joining us. Pleasure. Thanks for having me. This is UV's Cricket Diary, wherein <laughs> we take you uh, in the past, probably also a little uh, in the present as well, where we talk about a lot of stuff. So, legend. What does the word mean to you, Shane? A um, oh, legend is all the um, incredible people and very successful people who've sort of gone gone before this um, generation of cricketers. So, a um, oh, legend for me is. Someone like Jacques Callas or uh, Viv Richards, Ricky Ponting, those those players. I was very, um, very fortunate. Well, one to play with a couple of them, but also I uh, admired and as role models when I was growing up. So growing up in Australia, Australia is a very cricket-rich country. Mm. Uh, now because I've tagged the word legend, who is that one legend that you always wanted to become? You've not played with, but you've always wanted to become. Um, oh look, growing up, I wanted, I always wanted to be Viv Richards. He was a he was the ultimate sort of competitor, mm. uh, the way he the way he really took on the game, even in that sort of era of, of Test cricket, One Day cricket, which is something that um, us Aussies just absolutely loved. Mm. So, and then the generation that came, you know, after after Viv, you know, for me as a, as a teenager, whether it's Glenn McGrath, Ricky Ponting, uh, Shane Warne, those three in particular were guys who really mm. um, inspired me um, as role models to um, try and be the best cricket I could be. If I could ask you, what was the first instance you remember that you took up uh, cricket firstly? The bat or the ball? What was the first thing you picked up? I can remember more so batting in the backyard than I, I would have bowled for sure. But for some reason, my first real memories of playing in the backyard was um, with my with my grandfather's with my grandfather's old bat mm. um, that was it was way too big for me. And who was the first one in the family or friends who took you to like an academy or somewhere that let's just do this a little more seriously? Um, look, my, my dad was a huge influence in my career. He's a, uh, he is a cricket tragic. He lo- loves loves the game. Uh, he took me to a lot of a lot of games uh, initially when I was living in Adelaide, and then to the Gabba when I was when I was young to sort of to test matches and some Sheffield Shield games as well to really um, continue and grow the love of, love of cricket. Um, but uh, and then you know where I grew up in Ipswich in, in Queensland, there was very much. Uh, a great foundation for, for young cricketers, cricket academies and coaching clinics with some really experienced coaches around as well. So I was very fortunate to be able to grow up in that environment. Do you still talk about, discuss cricket, that this is the way you got out, this is the shot you should not have played, etc. Is cricket still a discussion in the family? Oh, it's still a huge discussion in my family for sure. Um, with with my dad, most of the times when, when I talk to him, we talk a lot about various topics in cricket. It's not about, certainly not about my own performances now because that done but um oh, we're always talking about different um you know different aspects of cricket about what's current what's going on mm. but also my son uh, will absolutely loves cricket as well so he's getting starting his journey in the um the love and passion for the game of cricket so that normally comes up in conversation a lot with my dad because he obviously went through it with me who does your son look forward to become is there someone other than you oh he oh absolutely mm. <laughs> um he uh, he loves Mitchell Stark. Um, he loves um, he loves Pat Cummins. So he, he mainly loves fast bowls at the moment. But um, he's a he's a good little batter. So. But does yeah, he, he also it. tell you, Father? You also need to start bowling again. You've not been bowling in a long no, time. I've been so. bowling. Uh, he knows he he knows through just my stories that I had a lot of injuries when I was uh, when I was playing. So um, now being nearly forty two, mm. it was always challenging anyway. And now I'm forty two. It's even more challenging. <laughs> Shane, I would want to take you to the first match when you entered the Australian dressing room. I mm. mean, you know, the first brushes, when you entered the dressing room, the Australian team was like one of the best all, mm. all across the formats. Yep. Was it very intimidating when you first walked in because there's a big names and big legends already of the game? You remember the first memory you stepped into the Australian dressing room? Uh, I remember the first time that really um, was very intimidating was the first flight that I got on to travel over with the, with the Australian team in 2002. Um, and I was on a, I was the fifteenth man, as a development sort of player um, in that in that test squad. So that was captained by Steve War, that was Shane Warne at the, you know, that continued to be at the peak of his powers. Glenn McGrath, Matt Hayden, Ricky Ponting, all the, uh, Adam Gilchrist, like just about well everyone in that team. Mark War played in that uh, played in that series as well. So oh, it was just I was very intimidated because I knew one, 
where I was at with my cricket and I knew exactly where these guys were at, um, at their, with their cricket as well. Some of the greatest players ever played for Australia and in the world. So um, it was very, it was intimidating, but the best part about it was everyone was so genuinely kind and nice and really opened their arms up to welcome me in and were so, um, were so kind with the time that they gave me and spent with me to be able to help me um, educate myself on all parts of life and all parts of cricket. What country was the tour for? That was for South Africa. 2002 South African tour. Yeah, that was my first tour with the Australian team. Mm. Again, initially it was for it was a test series. I was never going to play the test matches. Uh, and I made my debut playing uh, one day cricket for Australia there. So who were your first friends in the dressing room or the tour? So my first friends really was um, with Brett Lee. He was, because um, he was, um, what was he then? That was 2002. So he was like 20... Um, 24 or 25 in his absolute prime, bowling super fast, um, loved his music. So he was someone who really I, I always... You know, oh, from, it's to be friends with a fast bowler, so he'll not bowl faster to you at the nets. Uh, he still bowled faster <laughs> than the nets, but um, he was incredible. From that moment, you know, from the initial moment where we spent time together, we clicked and we're still you know, great, incredible mates now, and now being back on tour here for the Legends League. Um, look, Ricky Ponting was always incredibly good to me because I was... Uh, playing down in Tasmania for the state that he's from. Um, and I played one Sheffield Shield game with him for Tasmania. So he really took me under his wing even before I came into the Australian into the Australian setup. And the other one was Shane Warne. Shane Warne really just, um, um, you know, welcomed me with open arms and was so kind and, and generous with his time and um, advice around all aspects of, of life and around cricket. So, um, you know, those three guys in particular were, were you know, very... Yeah, we're incredibly good from the from the moment I walked into the team. Is there a ritual in the Aussie dressing room uh, when you know the, the way they welcome the freshers? Is there something like that? <laughs> uh, not really. Um, it's more so. It's a it's a baptism of fire. More so for for a young guy coming in with all these um, these legendary players who who are in that squad. You had to really um, you know serve your time and sort of pr- prove yourself in that environment. Mm. And it took um, it took you know probably about even three weeks for me to be able to sort of prove myself in certain ways to a couple of players in particular. So um, I had to, I certainly had to, you know, pay, pay my dues to be able to feel like a few people um, were okay with me being around a young punk. Was there someone you wanted to really impress that, oh, this is the guy I want to impress? Um, Steve Waugh maybe, skipper? Not re- well, Steve Waugh at that time, like I was never going to play the test, the test series. Mm-hmm. So, but Steve Waugh, because you know, be, me being a fast bowling all-rounder, that's, what, that's how he started out as a um, test cricketer and one-day cricketer was a fast bowling all-rounder. So, so Steve Waugh was very generous mm-hmm. um, and open with um, you know, him talking to me and, and spending time chatting to me about my, where I was at. And, mm-hmm. um, but that's how, that's how all the guys were. And that's why I just feel so fortunate to the time that I came into Australian cricket in 2002 as a 20 year old. They're, they're some of the greatest players that ever played the game worldwide, not just in Australia. Yeah. And they were all so open to be able to help educate me on, on how to play, on, on diff technique and, um, and just the game in general and also life around it. So I was very, very lucky. So about 20 years into the, uh, on the cricket fields, on and off the fields, uh, Shane, what is that one memory that you still want to keep with you forever? Like that one cricketing, you know, every cricketer has yeah. a purple patch. You've had a multiple purple patches. Yeah. Uh, look, I was I was very lucky to play in a lot of very very good teams um, throughout my time. Uh, of course, with Australia, I was very very lucky to to play with yeah you know, some of the greatest players I've ever played. So you know. There's so many great memories. Yep. I feel so lucky. That's because uh, of the fantastic career. You're yeah. Um, <laughs> the, probably the you know the standout would be winning the World Cup at home in 2015. That was something very very special, and that was um, very you know, more recent. Mm-hmm. Um, no question, winning the 2007 World Cup was very special as well. And that team that we had was yeah. was unbeatable. We didn't you know the team didn't lose in that <laughs> in that in that World Cup. Um, and then like in and around the well, I suppose. The IPL, the two ones that really stand out, were one, the first IPL playing for the Rajasthan Royals that no one expected us to do well at all and um, and being captained and me being backed by Shane Warne as well. He was the reason why I was at the Rajasthan Royals. And then for him to be able to give me the opportunities and back me the whole way. Um, and it makes it even you know more special now that you know, tragically he's not with us anymore. Um, and then you know, 
being able to do what I did in the 2018 final for CSK. My first year for them was um, something I, I dream, you know, only ever dreamed of. You just talked about CSK. I, I have to talk about Mahindra Singh Dhoni. Yeah. That's what everyone in India wants to listen. <laughs> yeah. Tell us something very, you've worked and played so closely with Dhoni. Yeah. Like, there's so much available about him, but there's still so less. Yeah. Because everyone wants to know more about the player. Mm. Is there something that you observed which was very different from the other cricketers that you've played? Um, oh, I just, I just absolutely loved how like calm he he was on a, on and off the field, and you know some some leaders can be very calm most of the time, and then sort of then you, they get agitated and a bit frustrated at times as well. Um, and I always ad admired how just icy and calm uh, MS Dhoni was all the way through captaining for India and, and CSK. And then to be able to see it up close and just see how he handled players and then how, how he just lived that way off the field as well. Um, you know, he's never, he's never, um, never frustrated, just always in a really calm, you know, peaceful sort of space. And that's something very, it's, I haven't you know, met too many people um, who've got that real calm energy all the time. Is he exactly the same calm off the field as well? Or he's more fun to be off the field? Yeah, he's, he obviously he's more, he's, he has more fun off the field. Obviously on, on the field he's still enjoying himself, but it's very much very steely and, and calm in that way. But off the field, I know he's always laughing and joking and, and, um, and making the most every moment. He, he, he certainly appreciate, appreciates life and in, enjoys it to, the, to the, as much as he possibly can with the, with the way he lives his life um, as well off the field. But no, he's, a, he's an incredible guy and I, just, I, I feel very fortunate to have played three years with, um, under him at CSK and got to know, got to know him very well because he's a very, very special person. Do you stay in touch apart from the IPL also throughout the year? <laughs> MSD, uh, uh, he's not great on, on, um, on text. No, he's not great on the phone, but I've got a few, few friends like that as well who are shocking. When, you, when you're there um, in person, they're incredibly good and very engaging, great company to be around, but there's a couple other, it's not just MSD, there's a couple others as well who, um, they're just so hard to track down yeah. away from. But when you're face to face, it's it's, it's like it's like nothing's Have you ever changed. Have asked Tony that I called you thrice? I texted you twice. You didn't reply. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Super. All right. I'll give you an option, um, Shane. Uh, an Ashes whitewash, where Australia has whitewashed England, mm -hmm. versus a World Cup victory. What will you take home if you have to choose one? No. Uh, they were both very special times. Um, um, oh gosh, it, it is hard. It is hard to split them in a way because that was my first um, Ashes series that I, that I was a part of winning and being a part of. So um, that was very special for an Australian cricketer. But I think when it comes down to a World Cup at home, uh, 2015, there was a really big build up to that one as well. It was like, you know, ten years out, you knew that there was going to be a World Cup at home. Um, I knew that I was going to be 34 at that time and hoping that I'd be still fit and, and playing and playing well to be able to be a part of that. And then to you know, be on the on the field when batting with Steve Smith when he hit the winning runs was, yeah, it was, a, it was, a, yeah, it was really was a dream. So the, the the era that you've played cricket with Shane has evolved from Test and One Day and then the 2020 mm -hmm. coming in and the franchise cricket coming in and then across the globe. You know, Australia has another franchise, India has a fr franchise cricket. So how do you? Of course, the load has gone on when you've you know when you age, the load of cricket has gone and you've played mm -hmm. cricket across the world. How do you manage your time across? Globes traveling and playing cricket, etc. Has that been a challenge with growing age as well? Uh, no, no. Like in the end, you to be an international cricketer, like for just about everyone, and it, it's living out your dream. Mm. So yeah, there are certain times when you've been on the road for a long period of time and you get a bit tired, um, but you 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 appreciate every moment because. That's, as a kid, that's what you dream of, is being able to play cricket for Australia and being an international cricketer and travelling around the world and playing against the best cricketers in the world. So um, but the schedule has been, it's been busy for a long time. Um, for there's, like I think of um, 2013, that was a, a year where I'd, you know, I was away from home, from my house in my bed for, I'm not sure, probably, you know, I was only home for probably two or three weeks um, during a year. So. Um, it was a crickets. It continued. It's been busy for quite a while, but now with the franchises being around, it just means people playing for different teams. Which there's just so many more opportunities for young cricketers coming through, which is an exciting, time, an exciting thing. How are you compensating the time that you spend uh, away from family now? 
Yeah. Well, that's that. well, that's why it's so important for me to um, for me during the summer. So, which is obviously in, in Australia, that's the big time for cricket, uh, whether it's commentary and coaching and that sort of thing. But for me, that's the school holidays for my for my kids who are ten and, and nearly eight. So that's a really important family time after being away and having you know being busy every summer for the last gosh. 20 years now it's that's my time to be able to give back to my family so that's a period of time that I make sure that I I clear to to be able to spend really quality time with my family all right one final question the World Cup this year again in India you've played mm. not in India what do you think are going to be the top four teams top four teams yeah well is that tough it, well it, it is tough because you know most of the most of the, the really good teams have hardly got any weaknesses at all but obviously near at home um, in your home you can be hard to beat England are playing incredible, incredible cricket now in general. Um, the other, the um, one day and, and T20 cricket's been brilliant, um, and their Test cricket has really, really exploded in the last year as well. So England, I think, like Australia, have certainly got the team and the and the firepower to be able to to be there as well. And and I think and Pakistan as well. Pakistan have have got some great batting depth. They've got some obviously got firepower with the ball. So I think they'll they'll be closer so as well. Australia, England, India, and Pakistan. Yeah. Yep. Fantastic. Hi, it's Shane Watson, and this is UV's Cricket Diaries on Radio City. UV Key Cricket Diary, only on Radio City. Okay.